Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. I'm Dr. Lee Warren here with you, and we're going to do some self-brain surgery today. It's Tuesday, 2nd of January, 2024, and we're trying to get this year off to a good start. We spent November and December learning how to throw off things that were holding us back, learning how to prepare ourselves for the year of the Lord's favor that he wants to give us to get our minds and our hearts connected in a way that will help us to be less reactive and more resilient to the traumas and tragedies and massive things that come along in life. And whatever you've been through, friend, I know that this year can be a better year for you if you can learn to place those circumstances in their proper place and to learn how to manage your mind and change your mind so you can change your life. That's what this podcast is all about, how we take the neuroscience and how we take faith and scripture and good ideas from science and smash them together in a way that helps us to find our feet on solid ground to plant our feet firmly in faith and move forward in hope no matter what we're facing. And today I want to just talk for a minute. I'm going to give you a little self-brain surgery operation, something new that we've never talked about before because I know there's a lot of anxiety and stress. There's a lot of people who are dealing with hard things. And as we go into a new year, if I can give you a strategy, uh, an operation that you can perform to reliably become less anxious and help your brain connect with your creator in a way that allows him to carry some of the load for you, then that'll help you on the neuroscience front and on the faith front. And I think it'll be valuable. And we're going to just talk about a new operation for what to do when you're so afraid and learn how to put that fear in a cage where it belongs. And we're going to do all that in just a minute. But before we start, I have one question for you. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. Are you ready to change your life? Well, this is the place, Self Brain Surgery School. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and this is where we go deep into how we're wired, take control of our thinking, and find real hope. This is where we learn to become healthier, feel better, and be happier. This is where we leave the past behind and transform our minds. This is... It's where we start today. Are you ready? This is your podcast. This is your place. This is your time, my friend. Let's get after it. All right, let's get after it. Just going to dive right into this quickly. Before we start, there's five ways you can support this podcast. There's five ways. The first one is pray for us. We are trying to take a mission of helping people change their minds and change their lives all over the world. And it's growing like crazy, and there's five ways you can support it. Number one is to pray for us. Pray that people will connect, that people will share, that people will follow, people will listen, and that as we use these concepts to develop the next book, that it will really literally change people's lives and help people connect their creator to how they are created so they can live in the way that they were designed to live. That's what we are after. And I'm doing that for you. I'm doing it for me as I recover, continue, me and my family continue to recover from the massive thing of losing our son. I want you to learn how to use the way that your brain was designed to operate to connect your mind, your brain, your spirit, and your body so you have your better life the way you were designed to, the abundant life that Jesus came to give you. So pray for us too. Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in Dr. Lee Warren, subscribe to the podcast. Even if you don't listen to it on YouTube, that helps us with the algorithm. Also, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure you subscribe so you get notifications of, of every episode as they come out. You don't have to go hunting for them. So please subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts or all those places. It really helps us out to have more subscribers. That's helpful. Three, you can become a paid subscriber of the podcast. If you want to put some skin in the game and help us grow this thing and spread it, offset the cost, and move it forward throughout the world, you can click on wleewarnmd.com slash join or on the links in the show notes, and you can become a paid subscriber. They get extra episodes weekly, almost weekly. They get videos. They get archives. They get things that the free subscribers don't have access to. More content coming on Substack very soon. And you can become a paid subscriber. Also, you can go to the show notes and click on the links of our sponsors. We have several uh, affiliate marketing things, uh, audio books and books that we mentioned through Amazon and other places. We get a little commission off of that. And several supplements that Lisa and I use every day, Armour and Peak particularly, that you can try and see if they help you in your life like they do in ours. And that's another way you can support the podcast. So pray, like, subscribe, follow, share, become a paid subscriber. 
click on one of the affiliate links and one of the one of the sponsor links. That's the five ways you can support the podcast. All right, let's get after it. I was on Instagram the other day and I saw an ad for something called a Faraday bag. Michael Faraday was a scientist in the 1830s and he invented this idea of a Faraday cage that you could basically shield a room from external electromagnetic interference and you can put uh, sensitive things inside the room people or equipment and outside radiation won't affect it and that technology has been around for a long time they use it in forensic science to put a computer in a room so it can't be affected by outside computers or wi-fi networks or any of that and now they have these little uh, little bags that are made with this special shielding and you can put your cell phone in there and it can't be connected to by an outside device so um, special forces operators and people that need to get off the grid for a while sometimes use these things so that the cell phone basically disappears from the grid. Now, you can't use it while it's in a Faraday bag, but nobody else can track you with it or find it on a network if it's in a Faraday bag because the Faraday bag makes whatever's in it invisible and inaccessible to the outside world. Okay, there's lots of different ways that's applied in science and technology and forensics and, and now in personal products that people that want to be off the grid for a while can put their phone in a Faraday bag. And there's, this is also used by these people who are concerned about radiation and they don't want their cell phones putting out radiation next to their bed. So they put the phone in a Faraday bag. They know they're not going to get any radiation in their room that night. They're also not going to get any text messages or any kind of contact. They want to make sure they get a quiet night's sleep. They're using these Faraday bags, okay? Now... The idea is, and what I'm going to bring it to you in a minute, is that whatever you put in the Faraday bag becomes impossible for you to access or anybody else to access, and it becomes impossible for it to access you or send you any information while it's in the Faraday bag. Okay, now put that aside. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Everybody is dealing with stress. The end of the year always brings a lot of holiday stress. If you've been through something hard, there's a lot of grief and memories and and stress and anxiety is just a part of the deal. In our society right now, our culture, we're all constantly burned out, it seems like. We're more anxious than ever. We're dealing with stress and anxiety. And I tell you all the time on this show that being in a high-stress state is bad for you chemically. It creates cortisol, which hurts your body, keeps you in a fight-or-flight state, makes your brain more sort of as if you were demented. So there's all these studies that look at people who have a high stress state, beta activity, beta wave activity on their EEGs, and basically their cognitive ability goes down when they're in a high anxiety state, and they start to look like similar to people on testing who have certain forms of dementia and memory loss and cognitive impairment. So basically, that's, there's, that's there for a reason. God knows when you need to run away from the bear, Your body needs to put a chemical environment and a trigger environment in your brain that makes you run away without having to sit there and process whether or not you need to run away. You just run away. You see a snake, you jump back. You see a bear, you run away, right? So so what happens is the blood flow from your frontal lobes, your executive function, the, the parts of your brain that you used to think critically and make rational decisions and the slower things that you do to make decisions about a lot of information... The blood flow in the frontal lobes goes down when you're in a high anxiety state. You have more beta activity, more hyper attention and focus goes up and your frontal lobes get disconnected. Your right frontal lobe takes over a little bit more and then you start to short circuit and go down into that hypothalamus, I'm sorry, hippocampus to amygdala fight, flight, freeze state more easily when you're in a chronic stress state. And then you rewire that because of Hebb's law, the neurons that fire together, wire together, and you become better at more easily slipping into that anxiety state. And it becomes this feedback loop where you observe that phenomenon enough through the power of the quantum Zeno effect, and you start saying, yeah, I'm anxious. And you start identifying as an anxious person. Then you start believing that your future is all about anxiety and that that's what your life just looks like. I'm just always anxious because my life is so hard and woe is me. And you start becoming the person that you're observing as an anxious person instead of realizing it's just a state that you've developed And that state can become something you can control. If you've been away for the holidays, if you haven't been listening to the podcast recently, these ideas about quantum Zeno effect and beta brainwaves and all that may 
sound a little funny. You may not understand what I'm talking about. So just go back over the last few weeks. It's really common towards the end of the year for people to be away and not listening. And the downloads are always way down in December and whatnot because of that. And that's a good thing. But if you don't know what I'm talking about here, go back and catch up. There's several recent episodes that cover all this ground so you won't be lost as we have this conversation. But I just want to remind you that there is a brainwave state that you can get into called beta or basically beta waves or the pattern that we see on electroencephalograms, EEGs, when people are in a stressed or super hyper-focused state. And now you want your brain surgeon to be in a beta state when he's operating on you. You want your pilot to be in a beta state when he's landing the plane. But you don't want to live your life, especially when you're trying to sleep, in this high beta state where you're just hyper-focused on something that pops into your mind and you can't stop thinking about it and you can't stop worrying about it and beta brain waves are associated with cortisol and stress and it harms your body and it feedbacks and you become, feeds back and you become super good at knowing as soon as you lie down to try to sleep at night, you're going to worry, the worry machine is going to turn on and that's all you're going to think or hear or feel. And then every night you sit there and stress and worry and worry. So that's what beta brain state is, this hyper-focused, vigilant, I'm worried about this thing, I'm thinking about that thing, I'm paying attention to that thing. And then you become better and better at becoming more and more attuned to easily slipping into that hyper-vigilant, worried state, right? And that's not good for you. So what I want you to do today on this short little episode on January 2nd is I want to give you an operation that you can perform. A quick little self-brain surgery operation. It's going to sound kind of weird. Now, you know me, okay? I'm a Christian. I'm, I, I'm not a new age mysticist or anything. I'm not a mystic, okay? There are some reliable methods that we learn from the Eastern meditators. and It's been validated with EEG and functional brain imaging scans that those people can put their brains in a state that's more relaxed by changing how they think. It's been shown in people who are really good at praying, too that over just a few days of focusing, meditating, praying, you can actually improve the circuitry in your brain that's related to resilience and relaxation and able to, ability to handle streams of thought without getting washed away by them, okay? And that, my friend, is getting us closer to this idea where Paul said in First Thessalonians, pray without ceasing and everything give thanks. Like, constantly be making your mind connect to God to say, hey, what's going on with this situation? How can I connect that? Thank you, Lord, for that. Oh, boy, that was a close call. Thank you, Jesus. It, getting this this idea that instead of constantly being in the waiting for the other shoe to drop state, that we can learn rather to actively be able to switch our minds into a more relaxed alpha state. Now, alpha is the brainwaves associated with open-mindedness, relaxation, connectivity, and then even deeper than that, theta and delta are the brainwaves associated with deep relaxation, meditative states, prayer, and sleep, okay? But you got to get into alpha before you can get into theta and delta. And if you're in beta, you're just focused, you're fixated, you're concentrating, you're hypervigilant, you can't rest, okay? So if we can then learn some procedure to switch our brains from that hypervigilant focused state where we're worrying and stressed and, and overcome by whatever it is that we're thinking about, that what's going to happen when I get to work tomorrow, that guy's going to be there and we're going to get in a fight again, I'm going to go to HR again, or I'm not going to get that raise, or I'm not going to be able to make that payment. If I lose my job, I'm really hosed, or if she doesn't come back, or if the tumor comes back, I'm getting the test results tomorrow. And you just focus and spin out of control. Sometimes it's not even something real. Sometimes it's I don't think so-and-so had a good look when she darted her eyes at me at work today, and I wonder if that's because she has been gossiping about me, or I wonder if this person said something about me to that person, and maybe that's why nobody said hi to me when I walked in this morning. And you start going down that rabbit hole of what if and maybe and all that stuff, right? That's beta, and that's what's happening at night to a lot of us. And as we get into this new year, I want to give you a new tool, okay? Now let's also understand that it's been shown clearly that one technique that good meditators and people who are good at praying and getting their brains into healthier states have learned is this idea of having a mental image of something. And if you can make yourself focus on a mental image, then you can switch your active conscious stream of thought 
to thinking about this mental image and the beta activity will start to come down because you're making yourself see a different picture in your mind. So one of, this, one of the secrets then of switching out of this anxiety state is to say, wait a second, I'm going to stop thinking about that for a second. Use that frontal lobe ability that you have of selective attention that we've talked about a lot of times before and say for just a minute, I want to see a picture in my mind. And one of the pictures that's been helpful to lots of people is to just envision darkness and emptiness for a moment in your head. Now, if you're driving, obviously don't do this. But if you can, if you're in a safe place, even if you're at work, you can do this for two seconds. Just close your eyes for a second and make yourself switch the stream of thought to, I want to see a dark space. Like if I'm sleeping, I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable in my bed, and there's this dark space in front of me, and I can't see all these thoughts that are coming at me. And I'm going to just, this is going to be a little weird, but I'm going to play a little music. I'm going to play some music behind our voices here, my voice here for a second. And that's designed, this is just a soundtrack that I got on a website called Toon Tank, and it's uh, royalty free, so I can play it on the podcast. And the purpose of this is it's music that doesn't have lyrics, so it doesn't engage your language, your left side of your brain. It gets right into that right side that's going to allow you to relax, okay? And so for just a minute, friend, I want you to see that black space in front of you. Whatever it is that you're worrying about, just, just for a moment, just pause and say, okay, I want to put myself in this room. It's relaxed and I'm safe. Nothing can get hurt me here. And I'm just going to relax. I'm going to see this blank space. Now I want to notice, as I divert my eyes down into this darkness, I'm going to notice a volume knob. There's, there's a knob on the left side in front of me. And that knob is labeled internal voice. That's the voice that I hear in my head that's telling me all the things I need to be afraid of, that's that telling me all the things I'm anxious about. And that voice is controlled by this volume knob, and I can see my hand reaching out, and I can turn it down. And I can just turn down that knob, and, and as I turn it down, the darkness, the, the quietness, the calm, the relaxation is, is getting even deeper. And I can feel it enveloping me like a warm blanket and it's relaxing me. And that as I turn that volume knob down, that inner voice that, that's telling me all these things I need to be worried about and concerned about is going down and down and down. It's less and less able to penetrate into my consciousness. And I'm just I'm seeing and feeling that dark, enveloping, safe space more. And then as I get that all the way to zero and I can't hear that anymore, there's another knob on the right-hand side, and that's God's voice. It's labeled God's voice, and I can turn it up. And, and as I turn it up, I'm just going to invite God to speak into this situation. And then I'm going to notice in front of me, there's a Faraday bag. There's one of these little bags that if I put something in it, I can't get to it anymore, and it can't get to me anymore. And I'm going to say, God, take this anxious thought Take this stream of thought that's had me in this stressed out beta state in my brain that you created and, and put it into that Faraday bag. I don't want to be able to feel it. I don't want to be able to notice it anymore. I want you to put it in that bag and I want you to keep one of your promises to me. Remember, we prehabbed our minds with this promise from Isaiah twenty two twenty two that says when God closes a door, no one can open it. I want to say, God, put this anxious thought into this Faraday bag and zip it up and seal it and close it in such a way that I can't even get to it. Now, I recognize, you might say, that some of the things I'm concerned about, bills to pay and marriages to steward and biopsy results to get checked, some of those things do need to be attended to. They do. But they don't need to be attended to right now. Right now, I know that getting my brain in an alpha state is going to allow me to then slip into that delta state and sleep or relax or hyper-focus or communicate or pray with you, hyper-focus on you and not the worry and anxiety that I've been feeling. And so I need to get my mind into a better state. And to do that, I've got this situation that might be real, but I can't do anything about it right now. And so I just need you to take it and put it in that bag and close it up until it's time for me to deal with it. And then you open it back up and give it back to me when I'm in a better brain state and I can handle it and actually do something about it. 
See, prayer is different than worry. Because worry, as someone said, is focusing on things that I can't do anything about. And prayer is talking to God about things that he can do something about. So it's a difference. It's two sides of a coin. You can't really do both at the same time. So I want you to see this dark space. I want you to turn that knob up and say, God, I want you to speak into the situation with your promises. I want you to reach into this situation and take these anxious thoughts and put them into this Faraday bag and close them up like you close doors that can't be opened until it's time to deal with them. I want you to keep the promise of Psalm 34, 4 that said, I called to you and you answered me and rescued me from everything that made me so afraid. Keep that promise, Lord. Put that stuff in that Faraday bag. Now, friend, I want you to notice as you're in this dark space and as you're allowing God to take those worries from you and put them in that cage where they can't get to you and you can't get to them, that you're going to start feeling relaxation. Your brain is going to start to be able to process and handle things in a different way and connect into those deeper states of relaxation. This is where where Paul says we can get into this state where we can pray without ceasing. And if you can learn to do that, where you can switch your brain from that anxiety state into, wait, quickly just turn this off, turn that volume knob down, turn up God's voice and his ability to enter into this situation and speak into it. That's when we can get to what David did in Psalm 23. When he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, sometimes there are real things that we have to deal with. I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Where is he? He's not home in a safe place. He's in the presence of his enemies. He's in a real situation. But he knows that God prepares a table for him. God comes onto the battlefield with him. He anoints my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Listen, if your thought isn't that goodness and mercy will follow you, then you're not thinking the thoughts that God wants you to think. You need to put some stuff in that Faraday bag. And so we've got this quiet, safe place where we can get our brain quickly from that stressed out, cortisol-inducing, harmful, rewiring beta position that keeps us hyper-focused on things we can't do anything about right now. And we're not actually needing to land a plane or do brain surgery right now. We're trying to sleep. We're trying to rest. We're trying to enjoy time with our family. And we've got to turn that sound knob down. And so today, I just want to give you that. Put your fear in the Faraday bag. And this is a method you can use to do it, to to see that dark space that's safe for you. Turn that volume knob down where the voice has to go away for a while and let God open up, raise his volume up, invite him in where he can speak into this moment and in this time. And he can remind you that he'll rescue you from everything that makes you so afraid. And he'll help you. And he'll do all this, my friend, If you're willing to change your mind and change your life, this is a pathway. It's an operation that you can perform, that you can learn. And remember one of the tenets of self-brain surgery is what you're doing, you're getting better at. And I want you to get better at turning that knob down on those voices of things you can't control and inviting the one in who can control them and asking him to take them from you and make them unavailable for you to feel or think about or for them to reach into your consciousness anymore until it's time to deal with them. And if there's something that really doesn't even exist or need to be dealt with and you're just worrying about it, then he'll put it in that bag and make it unavailable and you'll stop worrying about it. You can learn how to do that and you can become one of these people that can rapidly switch your train of thought and engage your frontal lobes to switch your train of thought and use that gift of selective attention and the way you're designed to live this life that's not overwhelmed by your emotions, is not overwhelmed by racing thoughts, that's not out of your control. And you'll get better at being better at controlling your thinking and responding instead of reacting to the traumas and tragedies and massive things of your life. This is a little operation. If you can employ this in 2024, my friend, you will change your mind. And you will change your life. And I pray 
that you'll be willing to start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren Podcast is brought to you by my brand new book, Hope is the First Dose. It's a treatment plan for recovering from trauma, tragedy, and other massive things. It's available everywhere books are sold, and I narrated the audio books. Hey, the theme music for the show is Get Up by my friend Tommy Walker, available for free at TommyWalkerMinistries.org. They are supplying worship resources for worshipers all over the world to worship the Most High God. And if you're interested in learning more, check out TommyWalkerMinistries.org. If you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at WLeeWarrenMD.com slash prayer, WLeeWarrenMD.com slash prayer, and go to my website and sign up for the newsletter, Self Brain Surgery, every Sunday since 2014, helping people in all 50 states and 60 plus countries around the world. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'll talk to you soon. Remember, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today.